SwiftUI has two ways of making alerts and sheets. And so far, I've mostly only used one, a binding to a Boolean that shows the alert or sheet when that Boolean becomes true. The second option allows you to bind an optional value to the alert or sheet. The key here is to use an optional and identifiable object as a condition for showing the sheet. And the closure hands you the non-optional value unwrapped safely that was used for the condition. So you can then use it safely. To show us off, let's make a new little user struct in here that conforms to the identifiable protocol. I'll say struct user is identifiable, has an ID property equal to Taylor Swift, like that. And then our content view will make a little property here that stores which user is selected set to nil by default. So I'll say at state private var selected user is an optional user equal to nil by default. So now we can change the body of our content view. So it sets selected user to a value when a button is tapped, then displays a sheet when selected user has a value. So I'll say here we have a button saying tap me that's assigned to selected user, a new user instance, as a sheet attached. And we're not going to use sheet is presented, we're going to use sheet item like this. So item this time is dollar selected user. And then inside here I'll say user in. And this will be the unwrapped user value when it exists. So inside here I can say text user.id and that is perfectly allowed. It's not optional. It'll only be in this closure on line 22 when it actually has a value. So let's press command R now. You see tap me, press on that, boom, Taylor Swift slides up. When I swipe away, this value is set back to being nil again. There's no one currently selected. Now, alerts have similar functionality, although here you've got to pass in both the Boolean and the identifiable value at the same time. This allows you to show the alert we need it, but also benefit from that same optional unwrapping behavior we have with sheets. First, add a Boolean property in here that will watch some value to be true or false. So we'll say at state, private var is showing user is false. And that's what we care about. That's when it triggers our sheet being shown or not. We'll then toggle this value in the button's action. We'll do is showing user is true. And finally, change out this sheet modifier for an alert modifier watching that Boolean. I'll say alert here, and its title is welcome, is presented, is dollar is showing user. And presenting, this time you write it as just selected user. It's not a binding anymore because that's being changed in the is presented binding right here. Give me the user coming in, and now we'll just do button user.id like so. So it should show Taylor Swift as the uh, button title. Let's press Command R and find out. Tap me, press Taylor Swift. So, with that covered, you now know practically all there is to know about sheets and alerts. But there is one last thing I want to sneak in just to round out your knowledge. When we're presenting a sheet, which is what we had before with the sheet modifier, so like uh, there, we can add presentation detents to the view being shown to make the sheet take up less than the full screen space. This is done by using the presentation detents modifier, which accepts a, a set of sizes to use for the sheet. For example, we could say, I wanna have medium and large sizes for this thing. So attach the text inside the sheet, I'm gonna say, uh, let's do uh, dot presentation detents dot medium and dot large. So two options here. And we're specifying two sizes here, which means the initial size medium will be used for our sheet by default. If I press tap me here, it slides up and it's only part way the size of the screen, not the full screen anymore. But we also said we support large detent as well. We put two detents here. As a result, this little grab handle appears and lets us pull it upwards to be a full size view or a half size view, depending on what you want.